ಓಂ ಸದಾ ಶಿವ ಸಮಾರಂಭಾ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾಂ ಓಂ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌ ಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾವಿದ್ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ತ್ರೈಲೋಕ್ಯನಾಥ ಹರಿಮೀಡ್ಯ ಮುದಾರ ಸತ್ವ ಶಕ್ತೇಸ್ತನೂಜತನಯ ಪರಮೇಷ್ಠಿ ಕಲ್ಪ ಜೀಮೂತ ಮುಕ್ತ ವಿಮಲಾಂಬರಚಾರುವರ್ಣ ವಾಸಿಷ್ಠ ಮುಗ್ರ ತಪಸ ಪ್ರಣತೋಸ್ಮಿ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಸೊ ವಿವರ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಇನ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಏಟ್ ಸೊ ಹಿಯರ್ if you see the from 115 onwards the acharya is trying to explain that the world is mithya so in the world two things are there correct i and everything else the subject and object the subjectivity itself is based on one's body mind sense complex then everything else is the objective world also is there starting from the akasha onwards a space so in our five elemental model we have these elements or what we call mahabhuta correct so the mahabhutas are space and then we say wind fire water and earth like this so these five mahabhutas are talked about in this five elemental model unlike the current scientific models of creation even the mind or is also included correct both the physical body which is called the grass or sthula sharira and the subtle body which includes all our sense organs and mind all these things are accounted for in this model of creation now the acharya tries to show all these things are mithya means mithya means it doesn't exist independently there is no independent existence what is there is only the sadvastu which is atma so there is nothing other than atma because everything is a product of this atma alone now this is what we call the karya karana prakriya when we teach vedanta we are teaching you a through a methodology called karya karana prakriya where we show that this entire srishti including your own body mind sense complex is an effect and the cause is brahman in fact brahman is presented as the cause of everything correct even in the brahma sutra brahman is presented through the sutra janmadyasya yataha and even different upanishads it is talked about eto va imani bhuta nijayante ye na jata ni jivanti yat prayanti abhisambishanti like this from which everything all the beings are born by which everything is sustained into which everything resolves that is brahman and one has to understand that brahman as non separate from oneself because that brahman is satyam jnanam anantam <laughs> it is consciousness and there is no other consciousness other than yourself you cannot you cannot objectify this consciousness it is yourself so that is the teaching that's all is the teaching so in this once you say that everything is a effect right everything is an effect of this sad vastu which is also conscious being then they all become mithya they do not have any independent existence now this was shown in so many verses here we have seen all these verses already and if you see in 127 acharya whatever pratigna he did here correct initially he gave a proposition 115 and 116 so in 115 he talks about 
the mind itself is mithya therefore all three states of experiences are also equally mithya because they are all based on the cognition through your mind only correct then he said that gagana pramukham prithivi charamam starting from space up to prithivi these are also they, they are all abhutam he says janimad jagad etat abhutam means what this entire world which is created it is it doesn't really exist it's only an appearance in this sadvastu sadvastu is the cause these are all only effects they don't have any independent existence now this the shruti is talking about these things with many different types of upamana like that acharya started then he gave he took the sadvidya from chandogya upanishad and tried to show through that how everything is mithya because the sad alone is presented there as the cause of everything and then it is shown that all the bhutas have come from the sadvastu and everything else including your mind is a bhautika bhautika means what it's an elemental it is made up of these elements only and therefore the elements and all the elementals are all mithya they do not have any independent existence then he went on to give uh some examples also correct like the gold and the jewelry etc okay so all these things are vikritis are are only modifications or appearances of on this sadvastu therefore he he come, he actually summarized here again ata etat asedhi sadukti param nam risha iti so only the sad which was presented the sadvastu alone it is established that that alone is the is not false not unreal anything other than that tataha anyad mrishatu iti so mrishatu tataha anyad iti anything other than the sadvastu is mrisha this all unreal iti siddham this is siddhano you understand this therefore what yad avadi maya whatever i said in 116 okay we saw just now correct same thing he repeats janimat jagad etad abhutam iti same this this was there in 116 also correct so he concludes and then in 128 he concludes whatever he said in 115 manasaha api anrutatvam asedhi amutaha pratipadita hetutaha eva so whatever i talked about before correct right? in the verses between 116 and 126 using the same reasoning mind also is equally unreal okay manasaha api anrutatvam mind also is unreal using the same reasoning whatever i showed you therefore what and also its activities charitam cha tadiyam asatyam ataha all the mind alone is moving correct whenever we cognize something it is due to a modification of the mind it is a mental state and so its activities charitam tatadiyam asatyam even the activities are equally unreal like even he gave an example of this some kind of an elephant elephant which has been put up see sometimes if we go to some fair or temple festivals and all that there are real elephants are also there okay we have gaja puja or even the swami the lord comes on the elephant but then sometimes they also make all some kind of a apparatus correct like an elephant with uh, even if they make it try to make it very real re- actually using some cl- clothing or whatever and inside that it is all some kind of a wooden apparatus is there and it will be moving also it will it may be raising its trunk and all that but that doesn't mean it's a real ele- elephant or its activities are like a real elephant correct it is it's all unreal therefore parinirmita varana cheshtitavati says so parinirmita means something which is put together like an apparatus varana is elephant and its activity is basically controlled by somebody else correct some other person is doing something with a wheel or whatever to make it active and nowadays they can even use some kind of a 
some other source of energy, correct? So like that, so even in Acharya's time, they had all these things, we can understand. So they, they had an apparatus to, sim, to simulate an elephant's activities, just like a show, correct? Like an exhibition. So he compares to that. So up to this, we saw already. Now, what? Now the student is asking a question. Okay, let us see that. Nanuna bhyavada shruti udbhavanam manasastu satona chakha pramukhat kathamasya bhaved anritatva gatihi manaso bhagavan vada nishayataha. So now this student is saying, you said that mind is also an effect. But nowhere it is said that mind has come from or it has been created from this sadvastu. That's what he is saying. Okay. <laughs> he says, Nanu na abhyavadate. Shruti, he, Shruti did not say, he says, what? Manasaha udbhavanam, the creation of the mind. Sataha from the sadvastu. Okay. Also not from space, etc., he says. Nacha khap pramuka, starting from space onwards. So he says mind is, he wants to show that mind is an independent entity other than the sadvastu and even all the other elements, correct? So khap pramuka, also it is not there, it is not shown that it is an effect of the elements. So mind is neither an elemental nor it is an effect of the sadvastu. Therefore, what? Kathamasya. Therefore, how you can say it is anritattva. Katham asya bhavet anritattva. So, how can you say mind has unreality? How can you establish the unreality of mind? Say anritattva gatihi manasaha. Therefore, what? Bhagavan vada nishtayata. Now you tell me. Properly, why the mind is also unreal? Okay. So, like this, a question is raised by the student. So, now Acharya is going to answer that. First, he will quote the Shruti. Okay. Different Shrutis he is quoting now to show that actually Shruti has said mind is a is actually a, also a product of your Sadvastu only. It is an effect. It is created. So now what Acharya answers that? Nanu sapta maatmana udbhavanam manaso bhidadhau asuna pisaha kathamasya bhaved bhaved amritatva gatihi manaso vikrititva gunasya vada. So here Nanu sapta maha. Saptamaha here is 7th chapter of Chandogya Upanishad. Okay. In the 7th chapter of Chandogya Upanishad, it's very interesting. So many, in fact, it is the last verse of the 7th chapter, I think. Okay. The 7th chapter is a big chapter. When we studied our course also, Swamiji, for us, Swamiji did, did not take the entire 7th chapter. Okay. Sorry, the entire Chandogya, because it is too big. We cannot complete it in the whatever three years course or three and a half years course. So, but he still took sixth, seventh, and eighth alone. His major Vedanta is there. So, we all studied six, seven, and eight alone. So, seventh chapter is also a very important chapter in Chandogya. And the last, the 26th Brahmana. Okay, within the seventh chapter itself, there are 26 sections are there. And then the last one, in that it is said, what is said? That from there, in fact, the, the what is the Anubhava of the Jnani? It is presented there. So for the Jnani, everything in the world is only from the self. Atmataha, Atmataha, Atmataha. Like that, it keeps on saying, Okay, everything has come from this Atma alone. Atmataha Pranaha, Atmataha Chittam, Atmataha Sankalpaha, Atmataha Manaha, like this. 
for the jnani everything is from the atma alone initially the presentation is what everything is from the sadvastu okay now you think that brahman brahman is presented as though it is something some third person correct jagat karanam brahma ishwara but then what what do you discover that ishwara cannot be separate from you ishwara cannot be one more object correct <laughs> if we can objectify ishwara ishwara becomes as limited as any other object that's why the even keno upanishad and all is very clear nedam edidam upasate whatever you imagine as an object whatever you objectify that is not brahman that cannot be ishwara because the very objectification makes it limited but brahman is ananta so like that what we understand is we have to discover that whatever is presented as brahman is not separate from yourself and then then what happens means everything is from me only mai eva sakalam jatam mai sarvam pratishthitam mai sarvam layam yati like this also the i think kaivalya upanishad there is a beautiful verse there mai eva sakalam jatam mai sarvam pratishthitam mai sarvam layam yati tat brahma dvayam asmi aham so i am this advayam brahma from which everything is come born created by which everything is sustained into which everything resolves everything resolves only into me i am the cause of this entire srishti that is the vision of the jnani okay so in the saptama atmanah udbhavanam acharya also says that's why but atma is not separate from sadvastu so <laughs> in that asuna api he says manasaha abidadhau asuna api sah along with asu means prana here atmataha pranaha like that it is there in the last brahmana i think 726 one it is abidadhau asuna api sah along with the prana mind also is shown as as having come from this atma alone which is sadvasu therefore what katham asya bhaved amritatva gati hi therefore how it can be said that mind is amrita it has like amritatvam is immortal and all that because why manasaha vikrititva gunasya vada so the mind is vikriti only it is also a modification or it is an appearance in this atma therefore it is mrisha it it is subjected to destruction it is mrita it, it is not amrita okay so you tell me now how it can have amritatva gati hi like this acharya is counter putting a question basically an akshepa so because the, therefore what it is not amrita it is only a vikriti it is only a modification mind also is only a modification because it is clearly said that it has come from this atma along with the prana and chitta sankalpa like this so many things are listed there it's a huge you can go back and refer to that then what further also he is now quoting the mundaka shruti next asuna karanair gagana pramukhaihi sah mundaka udbhavanam manasaha purushat paramatmana utamato vitatham manayitya vadharaya bhoho bhoho he he says asuna karanaihi gagana pramukhaihi so along with the prana and then all the karanas okay including the mind which is the antah karana then gagana starting from space onwards gagana pramukhaihi sah so everything what manasaha so in this so along with all these things manasaha udbhavanam mundake in the mundaka upanishad also the mind's creation is talked about along with the prana and other karanas and the space etc and where does it come from purusha paramatmanah uktam 
So all these things have come from the Purusha, who is Paramatma. Therefore, what? Ataha Vitatam Manaha. So therefore, mind is Vitatha. Means it is false, it is unreal. Iti Avadhareya Boho. So in this manner, you have to understand. So the Mundaka Shruti also is uh, quoted here. In fact, that Shruti is what? Etasma Jayate Pranaha Manaha Sarvendriyanicha Kham Vayur Jyoti Rapa Prithivi Vishwasya Dharini. Like this, all the Panchabhutas, mind, prana, indriyas, everything is supposed to have come from this Purusha. So this is Mundaka. Mundaka Shruti also is clearly saying mind is created from the Purusha. Then further what? So this is directly creation is talked about. Otherwise also mind is shown as an elemental in other Upanishads, that also now the Acharya is pointing out. What? Manasonna mayatva mavadi yataha tatayeva hi bhuta mayatva gatihi kusharira vadeva tatopi bhrisham vitatham manayitya vadharaya bho. Again, avadharaya, ascertain, understand this. What? Hmm? Manasaha Annamayatvam Avadi. It, is, it was said that mind is Annamaya. Mind is created or mind is a modification of the food you eat only. That is why the tradition, <laughs> what you eat is very important. Some people have this Swapaka. Swapaka means what? There are still people in India who only eat what they cook themselves. They don't eat anything cooked by anybody else. They will not eat. I have seen people like that. They Wherever they travel also, they will go get their own rice, whatever. They cook it themselves for themselves. And then they'll eat. If nothing is available, they'll have, they'll eat only uncooked something like beaten rice. Now they'll have aval, what we call. And then they'll get some milk boil it and put the aval in that and eat it, whatever. They are not able to make elaborate cooking. They will just eat beaten rice and things like that. So like these people are there. They are very particular about eating and they say that even the one who cooks <laughs> they, their whatever samskaras are passed on through the food they give you. Of course, this kind of a lifestyle can be unimaginable for many of us, including me, <laughs> because we travel so much also. But I think nowadays this eating out has become too much, correct? That, that can be reduced. Eating out need not be or should not be done like everyday people are eating outside nowadays, correct? That is unnecessary, I think. Mostly we should eat whatever is cooked in our home, correct? Of course, uh, when you travel or go out sometime, it's unavoidable. You have to eat outside. That is fine. But uh, eating out itself should not be like your everyday. <laughs> In fact, cooking has to happen at home. Then only it is a home. Like that Fuji Swamiji used to say. Right? He used to say that unless cooking happens, it is not a home. If there is no cooking. In fact, we also cook every day and then that, that we also offer it to the Lord. Right? Then only then there is an altar at home. Means you have to then cook and offer the food first. Naivedyam you have to do. Then only we eat. So all this is part of home. Then only it is a home. If no cooking happens, you are just uh, nowadays swiggy and all that is there. Correct? Uber eats. So even if you are home, you are not cooking. You are just ordering stuff and eating it's all delivered also. You have an app, you put an order, you get it within 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You don't have to, you don't have to really put in all the effort for cooking. Cooking also is fine for many people. Then you have to clean up all the utensils. <laughs> that is a bigger problem. <laughs> but anyway, it is better that 
you eat whatever you cook because annamayam manas is annamaya it is a modification of your food only whatever you eat in fact in the chandogya itself uh, it is said correct right? there is a in fact the, even in bridarnek also it is there so etasma jayate pranaha manaha sorry that is the mundaka upanishad annamayam hi somya manaha like that it is said in the chandogya so the mind is nothing but annamaya but before that it is also said annam ashitam tredha vidhiyate tasya yaha sthavishtaha dhatuhu tat purisham bhavati correct so whatever food you eat annam ashitam it is divided into three parts it seems tredha vidhiyate and in that the grass is the one which we excrete okay the grasses is excreted it is rejected after it goes through your whatever <laughs> stomach and intestines and all that then what the finer aspect of it only becomes your body correct the mamsam it is said okay so yaha madhyamah tan mamsam yaha anishtah tan manah okay so the finer part of it becomes mamsa means all this flesh physical body then the finest aspect of the food becomes your mind so like this it is shown that mind is annamaya so he says manasah annamayatvaadi yataha tataha evahi bhutam iti avagati hi okay kusharirava deva tataha api bhrisham kusariram <laughs> acharya whenever he refers to the body he says kusharira <laughs> because i think everybody has a certain abhimana about their own body correct we never get tired looking at ourselves in the mirror so we have a certain deha abhimana certain attraction to our own body and fact we have complexes also based on that that is the sad part okay maybe my nose could have been little bit bigger or smaller whatever so many things you have your own complaints about your looks also you try to hide certain things with makeup all these things are happening so he says kusharira <laughs> kutsita sharir kutsitam ku means here kutsitam means what it is something very lowly <laughs> don't look up on your body as something great or anything it is there it is given in fact body is a given correct we it is god given only really speaking of course once you grow up it is also dependent on your lifestyle and all that how much you eat whether you do any exercise or not etc also plays a part so you have to maintain the body no doubt but do not take it very seriously the body is going to age it will disintegrate at some point in time so just at least but keep <laughs> maintain it that's it like a trustee you are only a trustee because it has been given you cannot claim ownership of your own body also really so many people have ownership claims on this correct your your mother only fed you your parents fed you for a long time so all <laughs> their contribution only is sitting there as your body now really speaking so you have no claim over your body also really your only your only duty duty is to maintain the body but you have to maintain it so it is kusharira like this kusharira is says kusharira vadeva like even the body you everybody accepts body is a modification of the food you eat that everybody agrees but not just the body mind also is from the food you eat only upanishad is very clear about that therefore what tataha api bhrisham vitatam mana iti avadharya so based on this also understand that mind also is vitatha it is false it is unreal 
Okay. This has to be clear to you. Okay, now. Now, up to this, okay, now the Acharya has answered the questions of the student. So, Acharya has shown from the Shruti that mind also is a, is a product, is, a, is, a, is an effect and therefore it is as unreal as everything else, any other effect. Only the material cause alone is real, material cause alone exists, the Upadana Karanam alone really exists. Everything else is only Vacharamanam, Vikaro, Namadheyam. It is all only names and forms and function also is there along with the form. We don't deny that. Only a pot can hold water, correct? Clay by itself cannot hold water if it is not a pot or it is not some other form where it can hold something, correct? So function also is there but none of them are there separately. They do not have any existence other than being clay. That is the important point. So now, up to this, Shruti was used mainly to establish the Mithyatva of this Jagat. Now the Acharya is taking another route. Okay, the, I think the next 15 or more than verses, he is going to purely use Anumana. From Anumana only, he is going to show that this Jagat and everything else, including your body, mind, sense complex, is all Mithya. In fact, this is somewhat similar to our Mandukya Karika. So, the Mandukya Karika, if you take, there is a Agama Prakaranam, then there is a Vaitatya Prakaranam. Okay. Saudapada Acharya has a Vaitatya Prakaranam where he is trying to establish the Vaitatya, means the, the, the unreality of the world, using logic mostly. In fact, in that one important verse is what? Adav antecha yen nasti vartamane pi tattatha. Okay, that is the logic he uses. What is that? Whatever is not there at the beginning, whatever is not there at the end, in, in between also it is not there, he says, really. It's only an appearance. Adav antecha yen nasti vartamane pi tattatha, he says. Vartamane means in, at present also, it is not there. Like even the snake you saw, you are seeing on the rope. It is not there initially. Later on, it will get sublated. Once you know that it is rope, then you say, okay, even when I was seeing the snake, there was no real snake, correct? There is no snake. Now, it is also extended to other things like pot, etc. Because pot is not there originally. Only clay is there. Even when pot is there also, clay alone is there really. Once the pot is gone also, clay is there. So, Adav Antecha Yenna Si Vartamane Pi Tattatha. So, that which is not there in the beginning, that which is not there in the end, it is not there. Okay. Vitathai Sadrisha Santaha. Avitatha eva lakshitaha, like that next line Acharya says. So they are all like even this entire Srishti itself is like only Mrigatrishnika, like a mirage water or rope snake only. They are all equivalent to that. He says, Vitatai Sadrishaha, it is like whatever all this unreal appearances which we perceive, it is similar to that only. But <laughs> But ignorant people, they see it as though it is avitatha eva lakshitaha, he says. But for the people who are deluded, everything is real, world is real, their own body mind sense complex is real, suffering is real, everything is real. Not only for them, even for the nayaikas and scientists and so many other intellectuals, so-called people also, they all take everything as real, correct? But most quantum physicists and those people and all have certain understanding of the Mithyatva of the Jagat. Okay, you go and talk to any physicist, they have a certain, in fact, even the last year's Nobel Prize and all they gave for a couple of people who actually said that this whole, everything is actually Mithya, something like that, only they are 
they have established it with some whatever using their whatever quantum mechanics and all that they were given the nobel prize for physics so most scientists have some understanding of the mithyatva of the jagat but still they don't have any appreciation of the vastu <laughs> vastu gyanam is lacking anyway so here acharya is trying to establish the vaitatyam of the jagat purely using an anumana so now he is presenting that anumana in 133 very interesting we'll see that purupaksha mimam gagana pramukham janimat sakalam nahi satyam iti prathamam charamam chana prathamam charamam cha cha na chana chasti yato ruchakadi vadityupamam cha vada okay so kuru paksham now you do this pratigna this proposition you make a hypothesis or a proposition what is that what is the paksha here imam gagana pramukham all these things starting from the space onwards janimat it is all created okay sakalam sakalam gagana pramukham janimat so everything starting from the space onwards is all janimat means what it has a beginning it has it has been created correct and therefore what nahi satyam therefore it is not real this is the proposition you are making okay this is the pratigna this is the paksha okay now what is the hetu for that because any any uh, paksha or pratigna you make you have to have a reason for that you have to give a hetu so in anumana also we have to give a hetu the hetu here is what prathamam charamam cha na cha asti why because they do not uh, uh they do not they are not there at the beginning correct prathamam nasti charamam means at the end so they are not there in the beginning to start with they are not there at the end prathamam charamam cha na cha asti so for them there is no beginning or uh, means what no beginning means what they are not there at the beginning and then they are not there at the end and what is the analogy for this what is the example example also you have to give where does this apply whatever hetu you have given you have to have a uh, drishtanta correct now the drishtanta is what yataha ruchakadivat like even the because like even the necklace or some jewelry like even the jewelry there is no jewelry in the beginning only gold is there there is no jewelry in the end once you <laughs> again you are in some difficulty you go and give the gold you sell the gold there they do not care about your jewelry and all that correct the form is not important the guy who buys your jewelry back correct you go to a bank or you go to some other jewelry shop only weight alone counts and most probably they will also again they they are not going to keep it as it is they may melt it again correct your jewelry is gone but gold is always there correct so like this ruchakadi vat like even the jewelry this entire srishti has a beginning means it is not there in the beginning that's why it has a beginning <laughs> then it has an end means after the end also it is not there So it is not there in the beginning. It is not there in the end. Like even the jewelry, it is upama amcha vada. So you give this as the upama or the drishtanta. So now the anumana is presented here. The paksha of the anumana is what? Imam gagana pramukam jani matte sakalam jani matte nahi satyam. That is the pratigna. Then the hetu prathamam charamam cha na cha asti yataha. And then the upama is or the drishtanta is ruchakadivat iti upamam cha vada so now he has presented this this anumana so using this anumana now adav ante so basically he has he is represented the same karika only correct adav ante cha enna asti vartamane api tat tatha that is the same thing here so now acharya has presented this anumana and then he is going to further explain this
what let us see kanakeru chakadina purvam abhut charamam cha navidyata ityanritam adhunapi tathaiva samastam idam janimad viyadadi bhaved anritam so now he explains how the drishtanta applies to the the actual paksha so kanake ruchakadi na purvam abhut so he says the, the jewelry etc are not there in the gold in the beginning correct purvam na abhut charamam cha na vidyate even in the end also it is not there because i told you you can <laughs> they have melted the jewelry let us say only gold is there therefore what the jewelry is only a name and form it is unreal it doesn't have an existence of its own iti anritam similarly what aduna api so even here in this case whatever we are talking about with reference to the entire jagat aduna api tathaiva it is similar even with reference to the whatever is under discussion by us right now and what is that samastam idam janimat viyadadi bhaved anritam so everything starting from the space onwards okay samastam janimat they are all having a beginning they are all created and therefore what bhaved anritam they are all unreal so our people were very clear, clear about space being a created vastu correct right? this was not very clear even for most of the people only for the last 100 years or so scientists are saying space time also is created correct right? otherwise most people thought that space time is absolute and everything within that only was considered as created but for us the shruti is very clear our acharyas are also very clear that space and time are also created this would have been a little bit more controversial 100 years back now it is accepted scientifically also but anyway so he says starting from the space onwards viyadadi janimatte it is all created only space time itself is created so along with that everything else in space also is only created therefore it is all anritam it is all unreal right like even the jewelry gold alone is real there here the sadvastu alone is real so this is the analogy here so and both are not there at the beginning that is the idea and space also again in the case of space we may not see of course every day in sleep there is no space time that also can be taken as one kind of resolution but in the shastra the the pralaya is talked about for the entire srishti also correct so that way also it is not there in the end also we have to take so it doesn't have the it is not there in the beginning it is not there in the end means in between also it is not there really anritam bhavet now but the others do not accept this okay we have said this this anumana because we are all called satkaryavadi okay even the sankhya is called satkaryavadi vedantins are also satkaryavadi in one way because we say that all the effects are potentially there in the cause always no effect is can be newly created that principle is there in the geeta also correct nasat nasato vidyate bhavaha na bhavo vidyate sataha that is the thing what a nasato vidyate bhavaha asataha bhavaha na vidyate whatever is non existent can never become existent whatever is existent can never become non existent this is a clear principle but bhagavan says ubhayor api drishtontah tvaneyoh tatva darshi bihi says the one who knows these two things is a jnani correct it looks like very simple thing correct if you go to somebody and say whatever is existent can never become non existent means that fellow will be scratching the head what is what is so great in this <laughs> whatever is non existent can never become existent we say this but the common sense people what do they think normal people think that there was no part part was created correct the non existent part alone becomes existent they say the potter puts all the effort only for that purpose 
that is the normal understanding most scientists are also today thinking like that correct means they think that the non existent can become existent but gita specifically says that it is not it is never possible even theologies talk about it correct god created this world out of nothing most theologies say this that is also wrong we cannot accept that it is illogical in fact so pooja swami ji used to say god created this world out of nothing else you have to add he says he used to say <laughs> nothing else he will say nothing else means then the bhagwan alone has become the srishti correct that is our vision nothing else you can say but not nothing if anybody says they have created something out of nothing then i will say i will give you nothing you give me that something correct at least i am ready to take it <laughs> i give you nothing we can do a barter there okay i'll give you nothing you give me the something i am very happy to take it anyway so here so the the nayaikas are called ardha vainashika this because of which the the vaisheshika nyaya vaisheshika people say that the effect was not there the non existent effect only comes into existence so they talk about pragabhava pradhvansa bhava and all that understand the different types of abhava so the pragabhava means the the absence before it got created pradhvansa bhava means the absence after it got destroyed so they talk, talk about all these things so they say the non existent only has become existent that's why they are called half buddhist nyaya vaisheshika people are called half buddhist because the buddhist doesn't accept the karna itself he says everything is not there only shunya so he is called the buddhist is known as uh, asat karana vadi karana itself they don't accept the nayaika in which the nyaya and vaisheshika people correct the tarkikas they are called ardha vainashika or asat karya vadi they say karana is there but karya is not there and the new karya gets created it is a separate entity it has its own existence and all that they say and there is a connection also they say between the pot and the clay they say there is a connection called samavaya sambandha the relationship is called samavaya in english they translate it as inherence and all that so there is an inherent relationship between the pot inheres in the clay okay so like this they talk about all this all their own kapola kalpitam okay their own imagination they have a theory so samavaya is also counted as one padartha for them <laughs> it's a one category of existence so now to them those who claim that the pot really exists the jewelry really exists the world really exists acharya is putting up a question what is that so let us see that is very interesting he says kanakadishu yad upajatam abhut ruchaka pramukham pritaghe vatatah adhikam parimanam amishu kutah na bhaved iti vachyam avashyam idam <laughs> so he says kanakadishu yad उपजातम अभूत ओके रुचक प्रमुख सो रुचक प्रमुख अभूत मीन वाट ज्वेलरी एटसेट्रा स्टार्टिंग ज्वेलरी एटसेट्रा आर देर ओके अभूत मीन दे आर रियली देर हाउ पृथगे वेपरेटली दे हेव एन एक्सिस्टेंस ऑफ देर ओन दिस इज वाट द नई का स्क्लेन करेक्ट एंड मेनी पीपल ऑल्सो थिंक लाइक दैट नॉर्मल पीपल इफ यू आज दम इज द पार्ट is there means yes they will say part is there existent part even language we have adjectives like that correct existence becomes an objective of the part that is the biggest delusion <laughs> in fact we have to say party existence existence alone is really the noun it is there in the form of different <laughs> names and forms so you have to say party existence clay existence <laughs> whatever you can add so many other adjectives the idea here is if you say that the pot etc exist separately from their karana from their upadana karana which is kanakadi which is gold etc okay the jewelry etc exist separately from gold etc if you say then tatha then what then you have to say adhikam parimanam amishu kutaha na bhavet 
then the extra parimana means what some kind of a measure correct either it can be a weight or it can be something else it can be even width height whatever is there a separate height for the jewelry or the pot or is there a separate weight the pot doesn't weigh anything correct if you weigh it it is only the clay the jewelry has no weight of its own if you weigh it only the gold alone is is the, is the weight correct the way if you touch it it is gold you are touching gold only nobody is touching the pot if you weigh it it is only the weight of the gold even you cannot even cognize it without cognizing gold correct if you cognize the jewelry you are actually cognizing the gold if you cognize the pot then the clay also you have to cognize it's always clay pot but you can cognize clay without it being a pot also that is the beauty therefore the clay pot has to in the clay pot cognition clay has to be always there but clay can be cognized other ways also so there is adhikam parimanam amishu kutaha na bhavet he says why is there not this extra measure in them you have to now tell me iti vachyam avashyam idam this you have to now tell me now you give me the answer where is the weight <laughs> if you say part exists separately and it is connected through samavaya where is the weight of the part when i weigh it is only the clay alone is there so where is that means they cannot answer this it is all only in their imagination therefore it is really unreal only it is unreal it has no existence of its own like this acharya is putting up a it's a more like a akshepa again it is a it's a question by questioning this he is rejecting their claim rest of the things we'll see next week om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate om shanti 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम धन्यवाद